Hello and welcome to another session of Weir Wednesdays, when we take a deeper look at works of art in the Weir Collection at Riverbrink. My name is Deborah Antonsic and I'm the Director Curator. Today we're heading to the south of Spain, to the Mediterranean, for a close look at this painting by Joaquin Soroya y Bastida, titled Girl on a Beach from 1915. We see a young child, a girl, standing close to the shore, looking out to the body of water. She is nude, clutching a piece of white fabric, perhaps a towel or garment of some kind. Beside her, we see the corner of what may be a boat and an umbrella. And we're also aware of a large shadow on the right, suggesting a watch the watchful presence of an adult nearby. The colors, the wonderful blues and aquamarines and whites, which bring us to the warmth of the beach are also very typical of Soroya's work. The artist is known for his many depictions of water and sand and bathers and fishermen near his birthplace of Valencia. He is known as the painter of light of the sea and of beaches. Soroya was born in Valencia, Spain in 1863. After early training in that city, Soroya traveled to Madrid, where he continued his studies. This included formal studies in a studio, as well as copying in the Museo del Prado. Copying from old masters was an important experience for an artist. In the 1890s, for instance, fellow Spaniard Pablo Picasso copied both Velazquez and Goya in the Prado as a young artist. Here we're looking at Soroya's self-portrait from 1904 in the collection of the Museo Soroya in Madrid. Permission to copy in a major gallery, major uh, museum would be formally granted and recorded by the institution. In this self-portrait, Soroya evokes Velázquez himself, suggesting the dress and pose of the artist in Las Meninas one of the most celebrated paintings in the collection of the Prado. A bursary allowed Soroya to study at the Acad Spanish Academy in Rome for four years, again, a rite of passage for an aspiring artist. This was followed by a trip to Paris, circa 1890, where he admired the work of Jules Bastien Lepage and Adolphe von Menzel, both painting on plein air with exhibitions in Paris at the time. And here we're looking at Bastien Lepage's Haymaking from 1877. These are important references because these artists provided Soroya with a model for genre scenes, scenes of everyday life. Bastien Lepage's work was more naturalistic, focusing on rural France and the brutal reality of agricultural labor. But this work nonetheless provided an important direction for Soroya. Soroya began to experience commercial success in the 1890s after establishing his own studio in Madrid. Many of his, works, of his works from this period show an interest in social commentary, comment that expresses an element of social conscience. And this is evident in genre scenes of illness, such as Sad Inheritance from 1899, now in the collection of the Savings Bank of Valencia. As quoted in an exhibition catalog from uh, 2009, Soroya described his encounter with the scene. I was busy one morning making a sketch of Valencian fishermen when I saw in the distance near the sea, a group of naked children, a short distance from a single priest. They were children from the hospital of San Juan de Dios, the detritus of society, blind, mad, disabled or leprous. Needless to say that the presence of those unfortunates made a painful impression on me. I did not miss the moment and sought and obtained the necessary authorization from the director of the hospital to work on the spot and a copy that scene from life." End quote. <clears throat> the painting is very large, some 82 by 112 inches. The monumental canvas is highly finished. And both of these aspects indicate that the artist considered it an important subject. In subsequent analysis, it has been suggested that the painting is a depiction of victims of syphilis, 
perhaps alluded to in the title, sad inheritance, or polio. But these children have been brought to bathe in the sea for therapeutic benefits. The painting was a major success and won the grand prize at the Paris Universal Exposition in 1900 and also in Spain. Efforts to purchase the work for the nation were blocked, however, and it ended up in New York for many years. Following the success of Sad Inheritance, the artist's work focused more on the coast near Valencia and scenes of a lighter nature, so scenes of children swimming and playing in the surf along with the local fishers. These became his best known and best loved subjects. And here we're looking at Nina from 1903 in the museum, uh, uh, National Museum of Cuba in Havana. These became the artist's best known and best loved subjects for which he continues to be celebrated today. In these genre scenes, Soroya has distanced himself from the narrative content to focus more on simple depictions of a scene, of the sea, of fishermen, of children, of bathing. In his style, Soroya's work bears the influence of the techniques of Impressionism in what has been called a third way between academic painting, that is highly finished uh, work that focuses on the figure uh, with historical or mythological themes and Impressionism. So operating in a third way in between these two polar styles. And other influences on his work include photography. As a young artist, Soroya worked in a photography studio for his future father-in-law, Antonio Garcia, a well-known Valencian photographer. Soroya worked at retouching and illuminating photographs, but we can see the influence of his interest in photography in the framing of his subjects, particularly the beach scenes and his use of light and space, which is often foreshortened and cropped, such as we see here in Girl on a Beach. Soroya's career corresponds to the period of post-Impressionism, which shows the continued influence of Impressionism in the emphasis on the effects of light and color, particularly his representation of white in clothing and draperies, in the sails of boats and the loose application of paint. In this sense, Soroya is working outside of the avant-garde, so out, out of step with avant-garde trends, those trends emerging in Paris, for instance, in the work of fellow Spaniard uh, Pablo Picasso, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon from 1907, I'm showing you here, and Picasso's later work with Georges Braque on developing Cubism. Despite this, or perhaps because of this, Soroya enjoyed popular and commercial success. Painting in the genres of portraiture, as we see here, his portrait of Louis Comfort Tiffany, and landscape and scenes of everyday life, often with his family as models. After a solo exhibition in Paris in 1906, Soroya was given another solo exhibition at the Hispanic Society of America in New York in 1909. There he met Louis Comfort Tiffany, who commissioned this portrait. Also arising out of this exhibition, the noted American philanthropist Archer Huntington, founder of the Hispanic Society, commissioned a series of murals of Spain for the society building in, located in Upper Manhattan. It's not a learned and historical society as the title might suggest, but it does house a museum and a library celebrating the history and culture of Spain. Huntington had envisioned the work depicting a history of Spain, but Soroya preferred the less specific vision of Spain, eventually opting for a representation of the regions of the Iberian Peninsula and calling it the provinces of Spain. And here we're looking at Castilla La Fiesta del Pain from 1913 as one example. Soroya produced some 14 monumental canvases, all but one painted on plein air. It was a huge commission and occupied him for several years. 
He traveled to each of the regions and at each location, models posed in local costume. Each mural celebrated the landscape and culture of its region with panoramas composed of throngs of laborers and locals. So a major, major undertaking. The murals opened to the public in New York in 1926, three years after the artist's death in Madrid. It seems that it was the murals and other paintings by Soroya in New York that attracted the attention of Sam Weir, who described in a letter that he was very fond of one of Sor Soroya's paintings in what he called the Spanish Museum in New York. Weir had pursued the purchase of a work walk by Soroya for some time before the acquisition of Girl on a Beach in 1964. In the archives at Riverbrink, his correspondence with gallery dealers and auction houses, with the artist's descendants in Madrid, until what we are finally pursued, uh, purchased Girl on the Beach from Park Burnett Galleries in New York. In his letters, he described his vision for an art museum, what would become Riverbrink, his intent to quote, form a collection of paintings of museum quality, which I expect will end up in a museum by my gift. End quote. At the time of the purchase, Weir's brother-in-law also described Weir's intent to assemble a collection, quote, for which he has nearly completed a museum, which he intends to give to the Canadian government with an already established foundation, end quote. These statements are an attempt to reassure the holders of the Savoya estate that Sam Weir is a serious collector worthy of the purchase of a Savoya painting. This correspondence extends the justification for the purpose, for the purchase, that it will join an important collection, that Savoya's work will be in the company of Jacob Epstein and Guillaume and Augustus John and Hopner and so on. And also mentioning that there are no other Savoyas known in Canada at the time. In correspondence with the Soroya Museum in Madrid, uh, the building that I'm showing here now in this photograph, uh, in the, between the Soroya Museum and the artist's descendants, Weir is firm in his description of the museum or gallery he is building in order to reassure the guardians of Soroya's estate of the validity of his interest. For instance, in September of 1962, just prior to the incorporation of the Weir Foundation, he writes, quote, but from what you say, it would appear that you are willing to sell paintings to museum collections. So I wish to make it plain to you that I'm making a collection destined for an art gallery or museum, end quote. Sam Weir continued to pursue additional paintings by the artist without success for several years. In the end, he was forced to content himself with just the one. But in both subject and style, however, Girl on a Beach is nonetheless a quintessential Soroya. Thank you for joining and please look for our next Weir Wednesday session. Thank you.